it's here. The Type 6 is officially here. This video was filmed on Thursday, December 15th, 2022. Oh, also, yes, hair is really, really, really super short now. Um, but this video was filmed Thursday, December 15th. So if any information comes up between today and the time that this video goes up, I'll hopefully put some information in the description. But here is what we know about the Type 6s. Well, number 601, the first one was on its way. TriMet posted a tweet on back on Tuesday, December 13th, saying that it was on its way and showing some pictures of it, covered up of course, but still loaded up onto a trailer. And it was on its way from Sacramento to Portland, from the Siemens Mobility Plant in Sacramento to Portland. And it was to be delivered at the Ruby Junction Yard. The next day, after that tweet, Wednesday, December 14th, the train was delivered. It is officially at Ruby Junction. So, yeah. It's insane what's there. Now, we decided to go out there to Ruby Junction to see what was going on. And to see if we could spot it. And this was the footage that I got. Yep, uh, not the Type 6. In the few hours that I had received a picture saying that it was, oh, it's here at Ruby Junction, they had already moved it, and all of the garage doors on all of the buildings were all completely closed. So it's probably in that building. And of course, I got to see my number 405, which haunts me. It was the only train sitting outside, too. Of course it would be number 405. For those unaware, I have a train car that haunts me. 405. I have been on this train and seen it more than any other train. Just in general. If you can't tell, I don't have a script for this video. I am just rambling on and on and on. So I figure the next thing I should talk about is what features are going to be in the Type 6. Now here is how you find that out. On at least a couple of the pictures of the train on the flatbed being delivered to Portland, there's a QR code on the side of that wrap and it has a little TriMet logo in it. If you scan that, it will take you to a page which I'll hopefully be able to link in the description below that says meet the new Max trains. I'll again provide a link to this down below so that you can read it for yourself but it uncovers quite a bit of the new features that will be on the Type 6s, as well as what's the same from the Type 5s. Okay, but before I get into the features, why did we get these trains in the first place? What projects are going on right now? Southwest Corridor was postponed. Uh, the Better Red project, yeah, we'll need some new vehicles for that, but we're getting 30 vehicles. Why? Okay, the Type 1s have been in service since 1986 and they're old. <laughs> they more and more issues are coming up and it's becoming more and more expensive to keep them operational so uh, the obvious next step is to order replacements for them and so there are 26 type 1's and so we're getting 26 type 6's numbered 601 through 626 to replace them so that's the main reason Plus, the Better Red project is currently under construction, and that will require four more vehicles because of the increased service to Hillsboro. So that means a total of 30 train cars. Now, if the Southwest Corridor project were to have been built, then there would be an option for additional units that were Type 6s that would be purchased for that. Although, because the project has been placed on hold, I don't know if we would get Type 6s or if the new designation for those would be Type 7s. So now let's go over what's the same from a Type 5 to a Type 6. Firstly, the dimensions. They are the exact same length and width and just in general the exact same as the Type 5s. And the seats within them are the same layout. They will be the same layout as the Type 5s, except for one key difference there will be operating cabs at both ends of the trains so that they can be run as single car units 
should some mechanical issue come up or if for whatever reason they need to run single car trains. But these are still going to be high capacity train cars. According to TriMet, or possibly Siemens Mobility, the maximum capacity for these trains is 168 passengers per train car. So that's a lot of riders. But now let's go over some of the major differences that you'll get to see. Let's start with the reader boards. There will no longer, gone are the days of the orange dot matrix reader boards coming in new trains. In fact, honestly, the Type 5s and maybe even the Type 4s could have been equipped with these, but they weren't. This is not a new technology, but we have electronic reader boards. They're basically TV screens that can show graphics. And so these will have maps that will dynamically change to whatever the next stop is. In fact, in Seattle, the newer Link trains, which are almost our exact trains, Siemens S700s, they have the electronic reader boards as well, and you can find videos of them on YouTube. Now, I've been on a couple of them in my earlier Seattle trip this year, but I don't remember if I recorded the reader boards ever, but I know other YouTubers have. Apparently, the HVAC has been upgraded again, although from what it sounds like, it's just going to be for the heating, so it will keep the temperature of the cars more comfortable during the heating months. I've never really had too much of an issue with the Type 5s, though, with how they were heated. I mean, sure, it was a little cooler, but it wasn't too extreme. And now for something that really, really surprised me, because I was not aware that we were going to be getting this, it says that there will be new indication LEDs to show you which doors are available. I don't really understand what that means. However, in Seattle, they have very similar trains to what we got, and they do have blue, bright blue lights when the doors are closed, and then they turn green when the doors open, and then when they're closing, they will blink a kind of orangey-yellow color. But according to their page, it says that the doors will light up green when available. I don't really understand what that means, when available. Red when not available and yellow when the doors are operating. So I assume that means that the door, let, let's say you're arriving at Washington Park and the doors open up on the left. So as soon as you come to a stop and the operator pushes the button to open the doors, they'll blink yellow to say that they're opening and then they'll turn green to tell you that they're open and that you can walk through them. And then when they're closing again, I guess they'll blink yellow again and then turn red when they're fully closed. And the doors on the right would be lighting up red as well. So there's going to be a lot of red lights in the trains. But this is 100% speculation. I'm not sure if that's how it's going to work. And I'm not sure where these lights are. If you look at any of the renderings that we're going to get to in a little bit, you will not find the same sort of lights that Seattle has. However, there are some suspicious looking slots above the doors that maybe could have it, or it could be those little LED lights that are in the door frames that normally just blink amber. Maybe that's what's going to color change? I'm really not sure, and I don't think we know for sure how it's going to look. There's also improved headlight design and better security cameras, and a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes for what they like to call predictive maintenance where the train can send out information about what is wrong to the maintenance team at TriMet so that they can diagnose things before the issues get too serious. And while I don't know how well that's going to work, I wish them the best for that predictive maintenance thing because it sounds really cool. Now I'll just kind of show you the four interior renderings. These are actually really good renderings. It almost looks real, but they are computer-generated renderings. But these are just the four photos that they have that show off pretty much everything. It shows you the electronic reader boards. It shows you the internal seating layout. It shows you what the doors look like and what everything looks like. Wheelchair spaces, as well as what surprised me, and I think I've talked about it before, but it also made it into these final renderings. Take a look at the seats. Like, not the seating layout, but the seats themselves. Those are Type 3 seats. 
There is no doubt in my mind, those are Type 3 seats. Exactly. Except instead of purple, they're blue. Those are Type 3 seats. Those are exactly what 315 got. So I'm very interested to see how well that's going to work because the Type 3 seats are probably the most comfortable. They have the highest seat back, so it's just more comfortable to actually sit in. And they have that little curl on the end where it almost conforms to the shape of a person. So we'll see, but I'm very excited. It's almost kind of like 315. I think 315 may have been more based on the design of the Type 6 than it was the Type 5. Last thing, when will they enter service? So again, on that web page, it says basically the same thing. I'm just kind of summarizing here, but the first two trains, which I assume will be 601 and 602, or it's whichever one shows up first, those train cars will undergo extensive testing. They will be undergoing a 5,000 mile burn-in across the MAC system. We're talking probably 90 days or more of pretty much constant testing. So I am definitely going to have to go out and see that when testing begins, whenever that is. And then they'll fix any sort of issues that come up when the train cars are still out of service. And then the rest of the train cars, the rest of the 28, will undergo a 1500 mile burn-in. TriMet hopes to have the first train in service in spring 2023, but we will see. This was supposed to be quick, but thank you for watching this video, and I am super excited for the next generation of Max. Very, very, very excited, and you bet that I will be tracking it down and trying to film it as much as I possibly can. Stay tuned for more, and thank you for watching.